Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Bomber Crew. This is a game where, uh, as is often the case, I'm late to the party, you know? This is 2017 era of Steam. How many games come out a day? In the time that it took me to finish that sentence, 19,000 games just came out on Steam. 12 of them, 12,000 that is, only exist to farm achievement points so you can get trading cards, sell them for 15 cents and start building your player unknowns, battlegrounds, Virtual Skirt Inventory, White Label, Attire, Empire. But some of them are good. And people have been on me. They've been saying, hey, NL, you should play Bomber Nods. I say, why should I... Not Bomber Nods, sorry. I mean, that's a game as well. But you should play Bomber Crew. And I say, why should I play Bomber Crew? And they say, well, it's a three-dimensional World War II aviation-era themed version of FTL uh, that has some UI quirks, in my personal opinion, at least now I'm transitioning into the first-person active voice. Um, but certainly offers a compelling gameplay loop. Kind of a little bit like... You know those games, I, I mean, FTL is the most obvious touchstone, but you know those games like We Need to Go Deeper? Um, Captain Sonar is a good board game example of this, where you have multiple people who all have classes, and then they, they have roles that you need to do, kind of like Star Trek Bridge Crew as well. So you've got a pilot, the pilot needs to fly the plane, navigator needs to mark spots on the map, the gunners need to shoot at enemy fighters, and the bomber needs to drop bombs on enemy submarines and take pictures of recon targets, etc., etc. It's like that, except you control the entire uh, crew by yourself. I played for about an hour so far. It's 15 bucks. I bought this myself uh, with my old, my own hard-earned Canadian cash. And I've been having a above decent time with it so far. Does it necessarily hit the heights um, of an FTL? I don't think so. Uh, I think there's a little bit holding it back, but certainly promising. Is this in early access or is this just out? This is just out, and that's fine because it's actually uh, fairly polished for what it is. I think. Anyway, let's get started here. And the easiest way to get started is by just going on a mission. But actually, before we go on the mission, uh, you know, this is our campaign progress. I don't know, maybe we got to do like eight uh, critical missions. We're about to do our first critical mission over the course of this video. You earn money and also, I, I don't really know what this is. You earn tumble seeds over the course of the game as well. These are both alternative currencies I believe you can use to purchase things. So, for example, uh, I'm going to go to our aircraft and use some of our hard-earned Great British Pounds to upgrade our systems. For example... You can see right now, you know, uh, hey, let's go fuselage, actually. You know, you look at our uh, airplane and you go, standard fuselage? No thank you, sir. Give me an armored fuselage, please. That's going to increase the weight of our plane. Yeah, it's going to increase the weight of our plane. However, it's also going to increase the armor quite a bit, so we'll install that. And then in mid, we'll give us an armored fuselage. Rear, give me a little armored fuselage. I'm thinking tail, armored fuselage. And the wings, let's mix it up and go Armored Fuselage. There we go. So we got 1,500 left. Um, we got electro Electrical System Mark 1. I ain't about that lifestyle. We're going to go Electrical System Mark 2. So we've used a lot of our money there for that. We can also upgrade the gear uh, that our crew is in. So we, we've got a crew of people that we can kind of micromanage here. And you can tell that I'm micromanaging them because one of my crew members died. And I didn't have enough money to buy the flight suit for the crew member that replaced them. As a result, they're just sitting here in this, like you know, blue collar outfit here. So that's E. Smith. Congratulations. I'm going to put you in, uh, are you a gunner? You're kind of a gunner slash bomber. I'm going to put you in this basic flight suit. It's going to cost us 250. Now we're down to 45. We can unlock stuff, I guess, with the tumble seat. So we can get a basic armored set at 2000. We can also, you know, like we can go tough in a small O2 bottle instead of small O2 bottle. This increases uh, the amount of oxygen time that you actually get. I guess in this case, it actually just increases the armor. But yeah, basically, there's a lot of different axes on which you can improve or at least customize your characters. And they all have statistical uh, increases and decreases that happen with them as well. Like right now, we got a leather flying helmet base stats. We could go up to a helmet, lowers our speed, raises our armor and our, uh, I guess, temperature uh, resilience. Go up to a service cap, much lighter. I don't know why it looks like a jellyfish, but um, we lose a lot of armor, but we're a little bit faster. Maybe if the airplane's super armored, we'd be okay with going with less armor on our people in exchange for having them do jobs faster. Or we can go for this super heavy helmet, which you know gives you a little cold tolerance, slows you way down, but gives you a ton more armor. Anyway, this is all academic because we don't have the money for it. Nonetheless, so we're going to go to briefing here. Uh, I've done all of the non... Oh, I haven't done all the non-critical missions. Let's do one right now. Motor Factory at Zeebrugge. Short duration, medium risk. We get 150... If we return safely, we get 250 tumble seeds and 2,000 Great British Pounds. 
Seems like, uh, that money will probably go a long way back here in, like, 1941. So, uh, it's a tough game to play and talk about at the same time, but I'm gonna do my best to explain it, especially before we take off here. So we have a crew of, uh, seven crew members. The way that we interact, you know, they, they all have roles, we can see on the left side here. Uh, Wood is a pilot, um, we have a repairman, who also, you know, he get anybody can do any role, this is just what they're specialized for. Morrison is our navigator. Upchurch is manning the radar so we can see relevant things that are perhaps like below cloud cover or something like that. Hughes, Smith, and Kerr are manning guns. Kerr at the front, Smith at the top, Hughes at the back. We can move them around if we want. Kerr also is manning the bomber station, so if we actually like click on him, click on her and send her down here, um, you know, she can take photos, open and close the bomb bay doors, select the Gordon Bombay bombs, and then drop them when the camera is appropriate here. So everybody's got their own role. Um, so, we're gonna zoom out here. In order to fly, we need to use space, which is our targeting uh, reticle, and use that to adjust headings, and then we kind of issue these, like, micromanagement orders. But it's not as micromanaging as, like, an RTS is. It's really, it's a lot like FTL, you know? Uh, a stimulus comes in, and you go, oh, this is on fire, and then you go, who can put out the fire? Send him over here and put out the fire. Everything else, like, it flies by itself. We're gonna raise our landing gear, we're going on speed one. And we're gonna just do what the game tells us. So on this mission, I believe uh, we're trying to blow up a factory, which means we will need to be uh, ready to use our bombs. But not until we get uh, a little closer to it. So usually the game opens with you just flying around, and you, you have to keep changing your heading whenever the navigator gives you a new course plotted. This one will take us maybe over the English Channel. Um, we also want to peep the radar on a regular basis, and they'll shout at us if, if anything shows up on the radar, but... Um, occasionally we will see enemy fighters. We want these enemy fighters to, uh, sit themselves down, as you can see by the livery on my, my custom-made airplane here. Um, along with the pumpkin scrubs. Um, we want to be able to sit those enemies down. We don't actually fire them manually, but we target them, and then that essentially tells our, uh, our gunners to shoot at them. So it does start a little bit slow sometimes, I'll, I'll give you that. You gotta have a little bit of patience, but it gets quite frantic a little bit further in. It almost feels like a little bit of a... It's a bit of an abstraction. Don't give me the tutorial. There we go, there's our fighters. You can also hold control to slow down time, as you can see in the top left. And that recharges over time. We're gonna do so... Um, because that's gonna allow us to easily target these guys, but yeah. We, we just tell them... And they start shooting. But it kind of feels like a little, uh... Keep talking and nobody explodes -y. But single player, because you're constantly shifting between roles over and over. So, like, right now, we, we're shooting at these guys, but we also want to make sure we keep constantly uh, targeting. We might also go, hey, tail gunner. Oh, you don't have focus unlocked yet. Uh, our, our ceiling gunner has focus, so we can click on that. That's just a special ability that increases his accuracy. Um, so, by using this, you know, you can see it's draining right here, yet at the same time... Uh, it is also uh, allowing us to hit enemies more easily and garnering experience in an interim period. So we have other fighters I haven't targeted yet, but first we're going to go down here. This is our, uh, this is where we're going to want the bombs to pop. We're going to open the doors, we're going to select some bombs, and then we're just going to watch the targeting camera. And we're just going to see, like, I want to target these guys, because I don't think I've targeted them yet. But, we got to release! Release those bombs! Alright, it has been destroyed. Um, let's plot our course, because I think now they just want us to go back to base. This is actually a much easier kind of first mission for us to do here. So I'm going to have uh, us target these fighters again. We should be relatively... Uh, and by the way, Kerr, why don't you come back up to your gunner station here? You don't need to be shooting bombs anymore. Um, apparently we have not tagged every single fighter on the screen yet. If we can swing around and find the ones that we have not tagged. Just using radar. They're all up here. Oh, they haven't been targeted yet. It is kind of a large group of fighters, to be honest with you. Um, half our fuel's remaining. So I've actually I've made a mistake here. We do have to monitor our fuel. The guy who is on that gun turret, please close the bomb bay doors, which is going to make us more aerodynamic and thus lower our fuel usage. Um... We also, this guy's out of ammo. We just click on him, click R, he's gonna go get some ammo. Same for you, and then he's gonna go back to his station. So you can see we're on fire here. I'm gonna go to my repairman and say, you know what? Use your engine extinguisher. Extinguish that engine. An engine is on fire. Engine fires can be put out with an emergency dive by engine extinguishers or by sending somebody over there. 
Yeah, so we put it out with the extinguisher, but now we got no uses remaining. I'm also gonna switch to boost, which is gonna increase our fuel usage rate, but at the same time is gonna make it so we go faster, uh, and as a result might be able to perform evasive maneuvers. Similarly, um, we can also evade, um... Have we been shooting at these guys? We have, just doing a bad job. Hey, uh, up top, you got focus. Go take some cracks at these guys. I believe in your abilities. So, actually, we can now uh, get ready to end the mission. All we need to do there is target the runway, and then have our pilot go to lower gear. And everybody should be relatively fine here. Hughes got hurt a little bit, I'll tell you what. You can send Hughes with the F key to lay on the medical bed, and when he lays on the medical bed, uh, he'll, he'll heal up over time here, but... Yeah, that's a relatively successful mission, and honestly, a pretty good representation of what my experience has been like in, uh... In Bomber Crew so far. It's frantic, it's fun, occasionally a little bit overwhelming, especially when you're first learning it, but uh, engaging as well. We don't need to use boost here. Sometimes I do struggle a little bit with the interface here, and there's all sorts of stuff I haven't even touched upon. Like, for example, we had a, an ability there called uh, Emergency Dive, which could have allowed us to put out fires just by, you know, creating more wind, essentially, by diving really quick. We can also change our altitude. Uh, in order to maybe fly higher than other enemies are able to fly and thus give ourselves a, a better chance to not get destroyed. Gear is lowered, that's good. I've never had to emergency land or bail out, I don't know what happens there. And we're about to get some loot as well if we've uh, leveled up. And that's where things get a little overwhelming for me, because there is a lot of unlockable stuff in this game. And I am struggling a little bit. I find it mildly inelegant, I guess, the, you know, the the sheer amount of loot you get over the course of this. Because I'm like, I don't know, what do, do I do I really care that I unlock tan gloves for all of my uh, crew members? Maybe I should because it gives you plus 1% armor or something. But, okay, he's unlocked corkscrew and custom heading. I guess the ability to create our own uh, custom navigation marker to avoid hazards. Interesting. This one wasn't that bad. We got a sea survival vest. Better gun turrets plus ammo feed and a two-slot equipment rack. I have no idea what that does, but let's go. You know, we got some money. We might as well go over here and uh, see if we can upgrade that. So, you're on Mark II on the tail turret. What is a ventral turret? Oh, we don't even have one yet. Dude. Please. Oh, we don't have enough for that. I don't know if we have enough gunners, actually. You know what? For now... Just upgrade, you know, the, the turret at the top, because that's the one we're using the most. And um, we can also, you know, via the livery here, change things, like, you know... You, you can customize your... Your livery here if you want. We could paint, like, a little version of myself, perhaps. Like, right? Something like this, and then... You know, you want to give him the... Northern Lion glasses. Look, I've never been much for sprite work. Or art in general. So, like, I'm trying here. There you go. <laughs> There's a little version of me on the front of the airplane now. Could also go cat's eyes, but now nah. I think we're better off with this one. Good. Um... Cool, so the meat of the game is definitely just doing missions. Let's go do the mission critical and see what happens at that point. There are also, there's different mission types. So that one was like blow up a factory. This one is blow up ammo dumps. They're not all blow things up. Some of them are blow things up in the water. Some of them are take pictures of things. And some of them are drop supplies. Um, so you could, you know, find a position where you have a mission uh, where you need to, instead of drop bombs, you essentially arm bombs, but instead of arming bombs, it's the same loop, but it's, you know, food instead, and then you drop it. So there's a, a little bit of what I would describe as superficial or cosmetic variety there, but um, the missions also have different parameters, like risk. Risk goes low to high, at least as far as I've seen, short duration to medium duration. And of course, you know, you get bonus perks, almost like countering a dark event in XCOM 2 or something like that. So this, if we say, successfully complete this mission, we get enemy damage down for the next two missions, but we should go back. And do uh, something mission critical here. Medium duration, medium risk, very good rewards. We'll be supporting a daring commando raid on the impenetrable U-boat base at Saint Nazaire. They will ram the base in a ship packed with explosives before disembarking and detonating the charges. It will be quite a show. I'm not sure if we can see it, but I also have this fighter, like enemy fighters and aces thing going on over here. It's almost like a nemesis system 
where uh, these fighters will show up and then they're like kind of mini boss battles to some extent, but really I just kind of target them and let my dudes, you know, go to town. Uh, and they can escape or you can kill them. I'm sure if you kill them, you get rewards, but it looks like there's maybe six of those that are available right now. Either way, Operation Chariot. Let's go give this a try. I expect this to be a little bit more difficult. We'll see, though. Critical mission, Operation Chariot. Head to the commando ship rendezvous point at Falmouth. Okay, let's let's do it. Pilot, take off. We've marked a new heading already, so let's go target that. Where things get really crazy is when we have to, uh, you know, we've got units. We only had to reload uh, one turret one time over the course of that episode, or that, that last mission, so... Um, it was pretty easy, but sometimes we're gonna have units, you know, three different units are gonna need armor simul or ammo simultaneously. Two units are gonna be hurt. One of your units gets killed and knocked down. Another unit's gotta, like, go back here, grab a first aid, and resurrect them. Um, but the game does a decent job of tutorializing itself. And, and slowly teasing this stuff out, in my opinion, at least. Although, I'll admit, when the game first told me to get a first aid kit, I looked at this and went, this is first aid kits. And then the game was like, nah. I couldn't figure out what was going wrong. That's the medical bed. Of course, when I tell you it's the medical bed, it's a lot easier to be like, yeah, that's a bed, I understand. This is a first aid kit. But when you're in the heat of the moment, you know, flying over the English Channel with your engines on fire, it becomes a little bit more difficult to choose, you know, which one of these is the, uh, the appropriate response. All right. So for now, why don't we fly on like a lean uh, fuel mix? We don't need speed. Tons of uh, fuel remaining there in terms of minutes available at least continue to move over here save as much fuel as possible because uh oh speaking of which raise your landing gear which is also compromising your use of fuel as you can see fuel remaining continues to rise I, i'm not sure if that's real time uh fuel remaining like 44 minutes real time or if it's uh you know an abstraction for game purposes i would assume an abstraction for game purposes but i do not know The other uh, complaint that I have, and it's not even that major, because I, I, I almost appreciate the boom-bust cycle of entertainment that happens in this game, but uh, there are a lot of times when you start a mission, it seems, and you just have a little bit of downtime. You're just kind of flying around. Sometimes things will break and you send your repair person back to, to fix them, but a lot of the time you're just, you know, charting a course for a few minutes here, and it is what it is. Uh, but I, I, I almost wish it started a little faster. We're approaching Jaisil Beach, which I'm assuming is where our uh, boat is that we're rendezvousing with. Hopefully. Music and sound-wise, I hope you guys can hear it relatively well. It's, it's got some nice fanfare when you finish your mission, a little bit of radio chatter over the course of the episode. Minor stuff that I really like as well, like, you know, we have our custom text on the livery. I like that it gets changed to a color where we can actually see it, even if one of the tail, uh, I don't even know what you call it, tail fin, is blocking it. Just kind of like, it's a certain level of polish. Unfortunately, it only happens on one side, apparently, but <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> Uh, and I think the price is right for a game of this scope as well, like, uh... This, it feels like a good $15 game. You know, it, it's it's ambitious, it's got a lot of systems going, it gets the heart pumping. Not yet, because we're, I mean, this is... For a critical mission, we are kind of just... Flying here. There we go, okay. What, I don't know what this, uh, entails. But we're flying to it regardless. I'm assuming this is our rendezvous point. Maybe this is something we have to... Oh, yeah, okay. This is what we have to defend over the course of the mission. So we should be ready for that. The game does a good job of giving you a sense of progress as well. I know I complained about the amount of loot uh, that we've gotten. Nice. Uh, but it really does mean that like every single uh, mission you go on, if you wanted to, you could have new loot available like your your uh, your loadout could be different as a result all right so so stay with the ship don't let any u-boats torpedo it i will do my best you up here use focus please half our fuel remaining pardon me we have been flying for like five minutes or something just trying to watch radar simultaneously here Oh, target spotted at ground level or sea level. Where? Where? 
Yeah, get stay defended, son. Um. Oh, is that a U-boat? No, that was a plane crashing into the water. Running low on ammo, that's fine. I don't want to let any U-boats torpedo this thing. Okay, so who's out of ammo? Somebody was out of ammo there. One of our engines is almost on fire. Okay, you gotta go get some ammo ASAP, please. I have the R key to make that happen. There we go, okay. So, we got a U-boat there. If we have our bomber, go down to the bomber station. Open doors, grab some bombs. Might be able to dust him. A little slow on that one. A little slow on that one. You know he's about to fire. Please send us back in this general direction. 12 seconds, he's gonna fire. Eight seconds, this dude's gonna fire. Oh, we're, this guy's getting hit. Like, our, our, our ship that we're trying to defend is gonna get smacked a little bit. So you're, you got bombed. I think we've destroyed it, I hope. Yeah, it looks like it went down. I've only got four bombs remaining here. It looks like this guy's probably gonna get a shot off as well, but this isn't too bad. Hughes, why don't you take this time to get some more ammunition as well? Seems like you might warrant it. Okay, you're gonna go down. Those other submarines are backing off! Yeah, that's right. Okay, so let's get back up to where the... This thing is. Picked up ammo, bombing target destroyed. Starting bombing run, I've marked a new heading. Alright, you then. Close doors. Head back up here. And you can see there's some strategy and there's definitely always something to do. Enemy fighters spotted on radar over here. Alright, so let's go control, slow down time a little bit. It is a little bit more hands-on than uh, FTL as well, I think. Um, and I, I kind of like the fact that it's in 3D, even though my brain works better in 2D. Um, probably as a result of spending way too little time playing with LEGO as a child and way too much time um, playing Super Nintendo games. Okay, if you're running low on ammo in the tail gun section, just go get some. Ah, bomb the emplacements along the coast. Alright, so let's go do that. Set a marker there. Oh, we got a, an engine on fire as well. Can you put out engine 2, please? Thank you. I'm gonna need you to go down here to the bomb section. Open those doors, select these bombs. We want to close the doors in between this stuff happening because uh, it, it makes our fuel economy better. It It's just good practice. Things are getting a little noisy, I've noticed as well. My apologies. Okay, go get some ammo. And you get ready to release these bombs. Good stuff. Okay, keep it up. Go grab this one. You know that destroyed successfully. Can we just music on? Sure, but like... Just lower it a little bit. Okay, here we go. It's it, the game. It's like a pixie song, you know. It's loud, quiet, loud. All right. Do we have enemy fighters on radar? Bombing target destroyed. Select this bomb, then get ready to go. Um, oh, I don't think we've seen these guys yet. It's gonna slow down time while they come in. Please. Like, I, I got other things to be doing. There we go. I think we just missed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta go back. Completely my bad. I got distracted. Um, okay, top boy, go focus. Nobody else can focus. We, they don't have the levels unlocked yet. You know, it's, it's an experience-driven thing. Okay, one of our engines is on fire. That's no good. So we're gonna blow this up. We're gonna have our pilot do... Oh, he can't do an emergency dive. First off, climb high. Our altitude is too low right now. I'm thinking this this ship's probably going down. Now do an emergency dive. Sweet. I think it might have already worked. We're gonna have to send our uh, our repair person out to do uh, repair on this engine. Unfortunately, you're out of ammo. Out of ammo. He's on the wing. You madman. Prepare for the grand finale. Bombing target destroyed. Uh, select. Get ready. Release. I think that's the one we we're supposed to be targeting. Bombing target destroyed. Okay, get back up here. Enemy fighters spotted on radar. This seems bad. 
Excuse me, pilot, any chance you can do an emergency dive? One of our engines is in kind of a weird spot. All right, we'll just have our repairman go out there. Oh, we gotta put out the fire first. Just give it a sec, just give it a sec. Dive, you fools! Okay, hold on. We obviously, like, have to go back. Dude, corkscrew as well, see if I care. All right, Re oh, the repairman is dead. He actually died out on the wing. But you know what? It's it's a hard life in the business. So I think we're probably going to fail mission critical, especially because now our oxygen system is breaking. Oxygen tends to be pretty important in my opinion. All we got to do is return to base though. Yeah, I don't know, radio for recon. Ah. Oh, we're we're like in a tailspin. No, you don't that's okay. You don't need to do that. Somebody's got to repair this oxygen system. Oh, he's not dead. Kerr's not dead. Go grab a, a first aid kit, please, Smith. They're going to take forever to do this, by the way. Okay, repair the oxygen. Smith, go heal this person. And then up church. Go repair this thing right here. Hughes, you got to... I don't even know what this is, but go repair it, please. The oxygen system has stopped working. This is pretty bad news. Our plane is extremely beaten up. Good, good, recovered from injuries. Go go back to base, my dude. Everybody's dying of oxygen deprivation. It's too Smith, what are you doing? Please repair. Oh, I th he, this guy's already repairing. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, so we're all dying and and freezing. The oxygen is back. We're, we're freezing to death over here. Um, we, we don't have a navigator. Morrison, please go navigate. I think you are about to witness us all slowly die. I got a little caught up trying to, uh, trying to put out some fires. No visibility for navigation at this altitude. Honestly, like, if you're gonna die, you might as well just die. Don't let me stop you. I'm down requesting assistance. We have no first aid kits left. Our navigation system is, is apparently broken. Our pilot is dead. Hughes, I'm gonna need you to take the wheel. Because, like, we're, we're actually gonna hit the ground here. All right, Hughes. Hughes, you're not in the... Can't help but notice. See, we're, we're, we're a little too... Okay. We've hit the ground. Everybody is dead. Mission result. Success? <laughs> yeah, I would say. Our plane got destroyed. We didn't return to the base. But we did... You know, accomplish our mission. Survival on land near bomber. Oh, rescue please. No, goodbye Edwin Wood. Missing in action. Killed in action. Let's go. Nope, okay, Tommy Morrison. Also going down. Upchurch, KIA. Survival? Let's go. Roy, he's back. Rescued. Two for one? Two for the price? No, nah, never gonna happen. Goodbye, Evelyn. Christopher? Straight up dead. Well, we lost all of our crew members but one. That's pretty bad. But hey, we did complete our critical mission. And we got an inflatable dinghy that we can add to our aircraft for next time. So, as you can tell, I'm unqualified to be playing this game. But I'm qualified to talk about the fact that I've enjoyed it relatively well so far. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. Bomber Crew, available for $15 USD on Steam. It's interesting. A kind of FTL-like uh, that I enjoy. I, I like the aesthetic. I like the uh, frenetic approach to the gameplay. It's kind of the exact opposite of something like Opus Magnum. Uh, which I also enjoy, but for different reasons. It's kind of cool. Uh, not an early access, so I kind of th think uh, what you see is what you get for this. And uh, pretty difficult. But if you like FTL and are itching for something that maybe not necessarily is better, but uh, Scratch is kind of the same itch, but in a new shiny package. 
consider checking it out for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more. Let's look at that in the future. And there will be a uh, link to pick it up on Steam if you're interested. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.